Hello and welcome to another Carp Fix episode. This time around, I'll be joining newly crowned British Carp Angling Champion, Rob Burgess. Now Rob is regarded as one of the best match carp anglers out there on the scene. And this is the first time that I've ever actually fished with Rob. The tree that's there. And did you hear that? Obviously he's having a cracking start to his trip. You in position? Yes, mate, have a go. Can you throw bait to it? So it's going to be interesting to see how this session unfolds and to see how both of us go about our fishing on busy day ticket venues. The lake that we're going to be fishing is St John's on the Linear Complex. It's got a lot of carp in here, up to over £45. So like I say, it's going to be a very, very interesting session. It is the first time that I've fished with Rob. Rob's already pitched up. There's fish in a swim. We're going to be fishing on the point area of the lake, which is a very good area. The fish are always out in front of here. The weather could be better, but let's not make excuses. So without further ado, I'm going to go get my kit out, get set up and get some rods out. is electric. I thought you went up a gear then. As Tom mentioned, you are joining us both at Linear Fisheries St John's and uh, it's quite a pleasure for me to be fair. I've actually never fished with Tom before. Obviously watch him a lot. His angling ability is up there with the very, very best, you know, and he knows this place, this whole complex, like the absolute back of his hand. What he hasn't caught out of here, isn't worth knowing so my eyes and my ears are trust me focused on what he's up to because i'd love to know i'd love to know what he gets up to and how he gets all these big hits of fish he gets but um yeah we've just got down here it's looking very very nice we're on the point like tom mentioned we've got a lot to do um we haven't found spots yet we haven't baited up yet so we've got a hell of a lot to do the weather it's not looking amazing it has got a little bit better the last half an hour the sun's gone in we've had a little bit of rain so hopefully it's all looking in the right direction. That really is the absolute money spot. Now I've had several casts in this area now, and the first few, it was just pure gravel, you know, like a big old football pitch of gravel, which if I'm honest with you, I wasn't overly happy with. So a few more casts, and I have found at 26 wraps, pretty much bang on the line with the pole, but slightly left of it as well. It is smooth as you like. You're still getting a firm donk, so it's not silt. So the only thing it can be, is clay and if you find the clay areas trust me they really are the money spots so i am more than happy with my spot get some bait out there get some rods out there i'm looking forward to this right. robert thomas all right good to see you mate yes what? you all right some nice zones out here isn't there Mate, this, the middle of there has always been a good area, yeah. but like there's a couple of like, everyone will always say, oh, there's a bar here or there's that there, but it's like 26 to 28 wraps, it's just like a, just, it's like a dead zone. That's it, it's just, everything before that is just coarse gravel, I noticed. Yeah. You go just behind that 26, I think about 26 and a quarter, just to the left of the old post there, and um, yeah, mate, you get a crack down, but it's smooth. Smooth, yeah. A lot of it's got that like low-lying, sort of black silkweed as well, yeah. which don't be wrong, it, if you can't fish to the clearer areas, then it, you would still catch on it, but it's just being able to present in it. Mate, it's a good area, like, it's busy, you know, for, for a midweek, it's, it's still busy. And like any lake, mate, that you ever fish, the middle of the lake is always going to be an area that holds fish. Middle for diddle, but more importantly, what do you make of this weather? Ain't no ideal. It could be better, yeah. but, but it's like anything, it's when you're booked in to film, you can't predict no, the weather, no. you know. So what do you ideally want leading up to a sort of 
wind, any lake wind. of wind. You know, I'm, I'm convinced, especially with these pegs being gravel, I know it sounds mad, I'm just convinced that like, the sound travels so much through your line that when there's no wind, obviously they just pick it up. But yeah. again, you've also got to think, and it, it does, over the years of fishing places like this, you sort of get used to it. The other anglers, the fish are used to it. Sometimes if you're too quiet on a place like this, the fish are, they know, you're bit, they know they're being fishful, there's a lot yeah. of them in here. They know they're being fishful, there's spawns going in, there's leads going in all the time, but it's one of them, mate, you've got to start to fish for a bite. Like, I don't know, what, what do you plan to do to start? Well, we've got four days, you know, so I'm looking at it slightly different to what I'd normally fish as an overnighter, you know, and yeah. the weather definitely is getting better Wednesday, Thursday. Not yeah. it's southwesterly winds, which puts it in our favour. Straight down. Yeah, and also the pressure's dropping a tiny bit, um, but I'm more worried about that wind, you know, and I southwesterly hopefully will sort of, you know, congregate where we want them in the middle the of the pond. The fish are there, like, yeah. there is fish there, but it's getting them to go down, but... I don't With know. that in mind, yes. Yeah, so, I, mean, I haven't fished naturals, gospel truth, probably since about February, you know, so I know a lot of worm goes in there, and I have got a little bit, I've got a couple of kilo. Um, I was listening to fish hemp and corn, I absolutely love it, it's a fantastic way of fishing. You have to have some, like, yeah. it's one, like, because of how busy they are, and because of the information that's available to everybody, you're not doing much different to the next person. No. But by having them with you, there's no harm in putting I mean, I, I bring them with me on most sessions, yeah. but like, not a lot. Mate, I've got, I've got a little one now, it's too expensive. Well, that's it, yeah, that's <laughs> it. People think you need loads and loads of them, yeah. but. But if the weather was really, really good, like if we had massive southwesterlies, pressure was off the, off the grid, I'd probably have just fished normal mix. Yeah. But because we're up against it a little bit, I thought, you know what, it's gonna be worth the 50 quid just to get yeah, them going. Get them going. Get them going. Mate, I'll, so. just, I'll just start as normal. You're not going to catch 10 fish in the first hour, no. not on any of these lakes, you know, and there's no point over committing, mate. I'm just going to start 10 to 12, okay. tie it on an area that yeah. I found, and then and that'll be it. We'll just see how it goes from there. Nice and accurate and just fish. Accurate. Well, I'm fishing next year, I've got to be more accurate. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> right, mate, I'm going to uh, clip some rods up and um, get some bait out there. Let's go. For this session, I'm going to be fishing on the inside points at swim number 39 if you're looking at a map. Now, despite me having fish linear for a number of years, these pegs are very, very popular. So I've only managed to get on them a handful of times. They're obviously swims that are very, very good. They command a lot of water. And at this time of year, they're areas that I know hold fish. Now, in terms of approach, much like I do everywhere I go, I just keep it very, very simple and I'm going to fish for one bite at a time. The only difference being is this peg has got a margin to fish to. Now, a lot of the pegs on the linear complex don't have a margin. So that could be an area that maybe I could explore during the day, but I'm pretty sure during the hours of darkness, the fish are gonna come on and they're gonna come out into the deep water. So I have got a couple of options in here. So it might be that I'm not fishing with three rods on a spot, but I'll certainly have an area where I'll put at least two rods on. As I mentioned when I was in the peg, the swim that I'm in, it's got a no fishing margin. Now a lot of St John's, all of the trees have been taken out around the edge. So this is sort of the only area really where there's any cover for the fish. I'm just having a little walk up and there's a couple of holes obviously where anglers before have had a, had a walk in. And I'm just gonna walk up and if I see some fish under a tree, I'm just gonna mark the bank. Just as an area, just to keep an eye on really. This swim that I'm in sort of gives me an option of fishing open water and fishing down this margin. I'm just having a little look down now. This tree here is probably about 25, 30 yards up the no fishing margin. I've just seen two fish ghost under here. I'm gonna look in a few more little holes. So like I say, there's fish about, and this area could be good as well for a day bite. Shallower water, higher pressure, warm daytime temperatures. This is the area where you could get a daytime bite from. Well, the spawning seems to be going quite well. I've put in a little bit more than the 10 that I first anticipated, but this is another thing 
when you're adding natural bait into your mix, certainly chopped worm, the worst thing that you can possibly do is leave it festering in your bucket. Now I've probably made about 18 to 20 spoms worth. Rather than wasting it, I'm just gonna put the whole lot out. I know it's bait that will catch fish. They're going out nice and accurate. I've got two rods. I'm only fishing two rods. And the reason for that is I'm fishing with braided reel line. Um, and it can just be a little bit of a drama fishing with two. And the good thing as well with braid is, fishing on a little bit of gravel out there and you can feel it obviously transmit through the rod when you're fishing with a braided reel line. So I know they're bang on. I've got about three or four spoms left to put out. And yeah, we'll be, we'll be fishing, but I'm not gonna touch that sort of margin so to speak, as yet. I'm probably gonna go around and with a lead on the end of this rod and just have a little feel about around a tree that's there. Oh. And did you hear that? I mean, if you pick that up on the camera, that was actually Rob next door. Um, obviously he's having a cracking start to his trip. So yeah, um, so yeah, so I'm gonna get carry on getting these out. And uh, like I say, keep that margin free on the left hand side. And now uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know, I kept a straight face. <laughs> Well, they are now all out there, absolutely perfect. We had a bit of a sudden downpour. I have no idea where that came from, but um, very welcome, because it's a bit of a bland old day. There's not a lot of wind, um, and there's not a lot of going on really across the lake. You know, no one's having it off at all. Um, yeah, I can see us being sort of night mode, you know? Being very nocturnal, getting up in the night, keeping the spawns going in, hopefully. It's been a few hours since we got the rods out um, and like I said I've got this no fishing margin and quite a few fish have showed in the last sort of half an hour so I've just rigged up a single and just chucked it down now I've not gone mega tight if I'd have had a few chucks I probably could have got tighter but there's a few fish moving up and down so you never know I've chucked one up there as a single we'll see what happens but yeah it's looking good it would be better if there was a bit of wind but we've still got the nights and I think the nights are probably going to be a lot more prolific than what the days are but yeah, I'll chuck one up there for a couple of hours before it gets dark. So yeah, I'm going to see how it goes and you never know. That rod there might kickstart the session.